So here we are inside the Amiga then. This cable here is just what would be attaching to my hard drive which underneath my floppy there is the um, IDE to CF card adapter which I've got coming out of the back of the Amiga so uh, I don't have to keep taking my Amiga apart if I want to take a hard drive out and put the other hard drive in and whatnot. And uh, so here is what we are going to attach. I will pause the video here so then I can plug this into the IDE because it's a bit fiddly when I'm holding a camera. So I'll just pause it and get back to you. Okay, so we've got the first bit attached then. This would actually work just as is but you'd be just running at PIO zero speed and you can actually run it at PIO zero, PIO one, PIO two, all the way up to PIO three, PIO three being the fastest. And that's where this little thing comes in. And basically what you do is you have Paula, uh, sorry Paula, you have Gale, the Gale chip right there. And this will be connecting with this little socket underneath on top of Gale. So if I just move this out of the way and make sure the orientation is that way. So this just basically goes over Gale and you press down till it clicks on nice and tight and then we'll get this in place it like so so like I said this will now allow any IDE devices that are plugged into the buffered which is now bu it's buffered which just on the IDE of the 1200 alone or even an Amiga 600 it's not buffered so this is now buffered um, which allows you um, like I've been using a long cable on unbuffered which shouldn't do really, you can get data lost and whatnot, but I've never had any problem. Uh, so now we can have the 2.5 inch IDE, which is what's normally on the Amiga anyway, but now we can also have 3.5 inch as well, like in a PC. So you could have a full size PC hard drive in here, not that the case would actually fit properly with that, but you can attach a CD-ROM drive to this if you wanted to, or um, you can have a disk on module plugged into here, which I'm going to get at a later date. You will see me in a, a video down the line um, attaching a, a disk on module to this, which is essentially, it's like having a CF card, only it's not a CF card. It's an, it's actually got IDE, but instead of actually being a, a hard drive with physical moving parts, it's basically an IDE version of a, um, solid state drive 
they're actually used for um, industrial purposes, but I'll be using it in the Amiga. Um, so yeah, what else this little thing does? I'll move this out of the way again. So you can see what else this does. If you can see, let's swing the camera around. You can actually connect a reset switch to this if you wanted to. So instead of pressing the um, keys on the keyboard to do a reset, you could have like a little button that will do a reset. You can attach a PCMTIA um, LED, which the PCMCIA is right there and there's a thing for address lines I'm not sure what that's really for I uh, will find that out and maybe do a little update to this video and what else this um, little module does is there is actually a bug with the Amiga 1200s which if you have a PCMCIA card plugged into the PCMCIA slot and you do a reset um, the Amiga will not see the PCMCIA card anymore and then you'd have to like turn off your Amiga completely and turn it back on and get it working again or you'd or you'd have a library um which would do the uh, same thing i were using a library but now this little module will actually do it for me so i'm not using that library anymore and um so yeah that's the um installation of this Let's get round to the uh, hardware, uh, sorry, the uh, software portion of it. 